I mean, some of you might be surprised about how much this place just looks like, you know, suburban Britain or whatever. I mean, not the plants, obviously, but, you know, roads, traffic lights, the architecture of that house even. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's like this all over the world, everywhere you go, cities and settlements, they end up being pretty similar in the modern, in the modern day. Um, obviously colonialism has had an influence and up ahead we will soon be arriving at the Colonial Penang Museum. Excuse me, Colonial Penang Museum I found out is the way that they say it. Oh, right, I've come inside for the benefit of you, you, the viewer, because I care about you so much and your enlightenment. This is the Colonial Museum in Penang. This is my guide. Please tell me who lived in this house. This house, last time was, uh, this is a state, the, the government's house. Oh, right, so the governor the of governor, Penang. The governor had been staying here. What, would it be like a British man or something, or a Malaysian person? No, the British, British. And all of this kind of art, um... This is your Karara uh, marble. Yeah. White marble by R. Gansi. Okay. And these kind of things were purchased, what, all over the world? No, no, And no, brought to world. Malaysia? No. No? Last time I bought it from Penang. Last time the, the tycoon of Penang. Hmm. You see. Okay. So after that, uh, some of them got many wives when they passed away, then all the children sell it up. This comes from Florence though, right? Yes. In Italy. This came from Florence. And it's not from me, it's from the old Tycoon. And lots of this kind of stuff. Not all, has... Because from different different houses. Ah, so these items were not originally all in this house, but different sort of government workers and people like that purchase the items for their own houses and now you collect them here at the museum. Well, right, it's excellent, thank you. Let's have a look around. So this is actually the sister of uh, Napoleon Bonaparte posed here. So, you know, were there French colonialists in this area? French and English and Dutch? All? Uh, I think mostly it's the French colonists. Uh, no, no, the British. The British mostly. Dutch calm, but, mm. uh, here. I Malacca. see. Right, Dutch were more in Indonesia. Indonesia and Malacca. I see. Malacca. Right, so this was pretty much the British all the way in here. Now I wonder, how did you get all of these items collected together in this house? I have been collecting it for the past 50 years, when I was 20 years old. You personally? Yes. And you've spent 50 years collecting all of this? Yes. Amazing. Expensive? <laughs> Uh, at that time, some was not so expensive. Yeah. But uh, now, uh, I don't think so. You can get it. Yeah, right. Priceless the, now. The, the price. Uh -huh. that you cannot get all this stuff. Yeah. By oh. the time I bought the time also, it's already empty. Uh, do you own the house now? This is not my house. This, house. Okay. The oh, it still belongs to the state. Right, cool, excellent. Well, you've done a, a good job getting everything together. And how long has the museum been open? Right, so a relatively new museum now. How about this tiger? Where's it from? Japan. What's that made out of? Made out of seven type of uh, elements. Very rich, gold, silver, bronze, all things in. Gold, silver, bronze, ah. seven elements seven. all inside this. Can I the, okay. can the I stroke ice, it? The ice is gold. It doesn't bite me, no? This is a good museum because... The, yeah, it's an impressive, an impressive sculpture. A good museum, I like the museums where you can touch things. How about this stained glass? This is different. Uh, this, uh, uh, what's that called? Romeo, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, right. Romeo and Juliet scene. 
And the most important, the most important one is this. This two, this two uh, reverse spending is by uh, by my name. Uh, by William Morris. By William Morris. Uh, British. 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 William Morris, you say? Yeah, yes. This thing up here, the, yeah, the this, light. This the, one and that one, two pieces. Okay. Yeah. Okay, two reverse paintings. Yeah. Why are they called reverse paintings? Uh, because they draw at the back side. They draw it at the reverse side. Oh, he draws them on the back yeah. and we look at yeah, them on the front. Ah, yes. oh, right. So that's a reverse painting for you by yes. William Morris. This two. One, two. I don't know William Morris, I'm afraid. I got to say, I am British, but I've never heard of William Morris. No, I don't, I don't know him. Uh, well, it sounds like familiar, but... It's very long already. It's 18 something. 19th century. 19th century. Yeah. yeah. But maybe if he's very famous, I should know him, right? But um, I'm sorry, I don't know much about art. But I know what I like. Oh, more stained glass. Wow, how she find all this? Yeah. Wow. I just got to say, I mean, you know, this kind of museum thing is not my favourite thing, and you know, I get quite quickly bored of something like this, but it's really an impressive collection. And to think that the lady has been collecting for 50 years um, is amazing, you know? Um, absolutely amazing. And all of these items, moreover, have been manufactured all over the world and brought here by the, you know, the, the colonialists. So, I mean, this is not, I was expecting when I saw um, Penang Colonial Museum, I was expecting it to be the story of colonialism. It's not that. It's, you know, the story of the artifacts more than anything else. This story, the Baba and Nyonya. Now, obviously, Baba means father in Chinese, right? Uh, Nyonya, it means miss. Um, in like Malay um, and this union of a Chinese man and Malay wife obviously Chinese traders came here and took local wives um, and what is what the, the guy that, that works here that the son of the original lady that I spoke to has explained to me is that you, know, you can see the traditional outfits over time with the gentrification um, you know of, of the of the uh, the traders, the international traders, he was saying that it actually became more popular for the Chinese to be wearing tuxedos and this kind of Western dress, while the ladies, who, as is you know, as we've established, actually Malay people, continued to use the Chinese dress. And another good example of this um, is actually represented in the design of the furniture. You know, so although it's like a how can I say, you know, not a typically Chinese piece of furniture. It has the elements of Chinese on it, um, like the um, uh, peaches to symbolize longevity, the, the crab to symbolize good luck or something like that. So harmony. 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 Excuse me. Harmony. The peaches is longevity. The crabs is harmony. How do you say crab in Chinese? Uh, he xie. He xie. It's actually adding this and this. Ah, what is this one? This is Hehua. Hehua. This is Pang Xie. Pang Xie. This is Hehua. Ah, uh, uh, so Hehua. Okay. All right. Good. So is this this kind of flower. Which flower is that then? It's a. It's sort of a water flower. Water flower, not a lotus. Oh. It's a lotus, is it? Okay. All right. So it's the lotus and the crab symbolizes harmony. Yeah, together, and the peaches symbolize longevity. Um, but otherwise, it's a kind of British piece of furniture. Is it's, it? a, it's a fusion. A f yeah, a fusion. I mean, they, yeah, they, good. 
they fuse the uh, Western cultures into their yeah, the, the, absolutely. Their, yeah, their so this, you know, you a piece of furniture like this, um, or you know, the people, the dress sense of of the of the mixed couples, um, really gives a perfect example of what Penang and indeed Malaysia is all about, fusion. right? This fusion of cultures. Um, so yes, lots to be learned inside the museum. He doesn't want to be on camera, but. We have his hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the point of the museum now, I, as I say, I thought it'd be a history of colonialism. It's really a history of the artifacts. But what Eric has explained to me, he's the last guide, the son of the first guide. Um, she's done all the hard work. She's collected everything. And now, but Eric certainly knows how to give a tour and obviously has a bit of better standard of English because he's younger so he's been educated um, all his life in English so um, yeah really got to understand what the museum's all about from speaking with Eric and um, it was very interesting actually um, you know it's really depicting the way that um, colonialism has changed the lifestyle of the Penang people and um, how the artifacts, you know, are a reflection of that. So that's what it's really about. And if that sounds even more interesting to you, then come on. I am now just going to stop and recline for a couple of minutes. Enjoy my F and N groovy grape. I'm not advertising, but it tastes like Vimto. So again, well recommended. Cheers.